guys, it's Q&A this morning. It's Ask Me Anything. This is one of those free-for-alls. Let's have fun together this morning, and I'm happy to chat whatever's on your mind this morning. My name is Heather Quizzle. I'm here to help level up your business and level up your life. I got nothing in mind specifically for you today, so I'm gonna let you decide. You have any questions? Um, do you have any things that you're stuck on? Um, do you need any guidance in anything or maybe even perspective? I would love to share some of that with you this morning and we'll just have fun with it today. Michelle, good morning, Michelle. Favorite books? Oh my gosh, girl. Um, this is a loaded question and I'll tell you why. When people ask for favorite books, it depends on what season I was in, right? Books that really affected me in certain seasons or helped me overcome certain challenges, right? I'll tell you like go-to books for me and I might even have one right here. Oh, I do. Actually, I do. The War of Art. If you don't own this, if you've never read this, this is a must have for any person. It's not about art. It's not about art. It is about the resistance and the challenges we have specifically as anybody working to put our stuff out there, put ourselves out there, the resistance that comes in and how to get over fear. This is something I go back to again and again and again, which is why it was at arm's length, right? Michelle, another go-to everybody should have and read on a continual basis is, um, and, and now I just, <laughs> Where, where did that book go? I'm looking at it in my mind. Think and Grow Rich. Um, I'm a big believer um, in um, our thought patterns shape how we behave, how we think, um, and ultimately what we achieve. And so do more work on changing your thinking, rewiring your brain than anything else. And that is really, I think, the, the ticket to the good stuff. Podcasts. Um, I'll tell you, I'm not a huge podcast. I, I'm more of a reader than an audio because um, I feel like I listen to people all day long. <laughs> so um, I love, I've been really loving um, Tom Bilyeu, um with Impact Theory. Uh, I'm really loving him lately. Um, Joe Rogan, occasionally, my husband's a big fan. Um, love, love Lewis Howes. My girlfriend, Caitlin, introduced me to him a couple years ago. Love Lewis Howes. Entrepreneur on Fire, an awesome podcast. And it's really what kicked me off. I started to learn a lot about business and the way successful people think, the way, how they fail and come back. That was a really great podcast. I'm gonna be honest. Number one, I've got two email accounts and I've got an assistant that manages one. But also, I'm one of those people that keeps my thumb on things I don't like um, clutter. So an inbox to me is clutter and it drives me crazy. So I check emails multiple times a day and I filter them very quickly. They're either deleted um, or they're left there until I deal with them, kind of like a, a to-do list. Um, and I, I just simply don't let it get out of control. I also am quick to take myself off of email lists that don't serve me. So like, you know, the old Navy, the Gap emails, I don't need those. I don't need that, that just adds clutter and more time wasted to delete them. I check email usually right after my live here, so in the morning and then at the tail end of the afternoon. So I get to it twice if there's anything urgent that I need to get to, I can handle that, but that's how I keep it clean. If you have a massive volume, like where is it coming from? Is it wor actual work related or is it email lists that don't serve you? Let me, let me put it this way. Your email box is somebody else's agenda. They want something from you, right? They want you to see their sale. They want you to answer this question, um, whatever that is. So if you have a career, right? You've got an inbox, you probably got a boss and clients and all the things and their agenda and you've got to handle those. But then there's a lot of emails that aren't important to you and they're not worth your time. Be heavy handed in filtering those. I don't answer a lot of stuff that, especially through like my website, I don't answer stuff that isn't pertinent, that's not gonna help me serve somebody, if that makes sense. What equipment I use to go to do my live videos phone, laptop, this is kind of embarrassing, but I'll give you a little um, snapshot of what I've got going on right now. I'm just using my iPhone. 
I use my iPhone, I don't use a microphone, um, I have a light. I'm in my bedroom today, I've been feeling like my office is not inspiring me this week, I don't wanna be in it. Um, and that happens to me, sometimes I'll be going to the coffee shop for weeks because I just need a change of pace. See, like this is my rise, I got my little ottoman, some boxes, um, I need to get some height for my phone and I also have this tiny little tripod it's on, it's like literally this tall. Um, I have a light. Um, because it makes everybody look better. It's pretty basic, you guys. Literally, I keep this little tripod with me everywhere I go. Like I had it in my backpack yesterday, did a live video, pulled it out so I had something to hold on to instead of the phone. Um, but I have a pretty low, what do you call it, low budget equipment. Now I will say in my office, I have the same setup, but I've got two lights and I have a, a regular sized tripod with a real video camera on it because my video editing guy, he doesn't like the quality of a live video. So often I have this camera going live, but then I have a video camera right in the background and I'm actually looking into that cam camera lens because that video then gets edited, put on YouTube and it's a forever video. This is something for any of you that are doing live, I want you to think about this. Live video on Facebook is short term. like. In a day, nobody's gonna see it again. Like nobody ever goes back and watches old Facebook live videos of mine. Like they're done and they're over. And so we capture the content on a regular video camera that is, like I said, it's polished, it's done the thing and it's put onto YouTube and there's the forever version of it and people do. They'll find you on YouTube, they'll watch all your videos, they'll pick and choose, whatever. And so I am, um, I should say I've been coached um, to never, um, never do content that cannot be reused. I think the biggest struggle in business, and this is probably for anyone, is all the things that I'm not strong at, right? All the things that I'm not strong at. And being social and um, even like being what you would call the center of attention is not my favorite thing. It's not natural to me. I love to train, put me on stage in front of thousands. As long as I'm talking about my zone of genius, I will love it. But if you put me up there to like, I don't know, financially advise somebody or talk spreadsheets or um, you know, whatever, I'm, I'm gonna hate it. So the social piece about of my business um, is, I would say, a constant struggle. Not in a bad way, it's just that it's not natural for me to um, walk into a room and introduce myself. It's not natural for me to just reach out to make new friends. I have made it a part of my routine, which makes it become more natural. But if I had my way, I wouldn't be dressed um, I'd be hiding behind my computer and I probably wouldn't have many friends because I'm comfortable just being in my home. So that's a struggle for me. I get overwhelmed really easy. Um, sensory overload is a term I use a lot. Um, it's very easy for me to get overloaded. I'm also an empath. Um, if you don't know what an empath is, I would encourage you to go to Pinterest, which is my favorite search engine and look it up because chances are many of you are as well. And when you understand that, it will help you combat it better. So an empath like absorbs the energy of other people. So like I can feel, um, I can feel tension that other people carry. I can feel insecurity, doubt, I can feel lies. Um, I can also feel joy and, and um, I, I love, being around people that give me that sort of energy because I soak it in. The problem with being in a relationship driven business like I am, being a leader of thousands, is that I absorb a lot of people's energy in a day and a lot of it isn't positive. So the struggle is how do I release that? Um, and so for me, it's become a pretty um, dedicated self care routine. I, I think that's what people call it. I call it my bedtime routine, like putting myself to bed at night. You know, with babies, like you bathe them in lavender, like you get them calmed down. I gotta do that for myself. Um, so that is a, a struggle for me because if I get in overwhelm, 
then I'm in what I call the fetal position and I can't serve or do anything, right? How do you come up with different topics to talk about every day? Okay, you mean live, right? Um, this is a question I get a lot. This is a really good one. Let me take a drink, check my time. How do you come up with things to talk about every day? And I go live five days a week. I usually have an interview once, so that takes a little bit of load off. Now, if I do a Q&A like this, I get out another day. No, just kidding. This is effort, right? For me to, to be able to come up with ideas, I have to be working in, in various ways throughout any given day. My ideas come from coaching my clients and my team because if you are in a space where you are serving other people like that you will start to see that there's themes like oh this has been a struggle lately for a lot of different people that's gonna be something that I'm gonna coach train or talk about here right a lot of my ideas come from the struggles of the people that I work with every day the other part of that is I've got to be reading every day to be learning new things to, to inspire me for ideas. And so my morning routine includes, uh, I've talked about this before, an hour bath. But in that hour bath, um, I'm soaking, I'm meditating slash visualizing. I'm also reading for inspiration. And a lot of times, I don't know what I'm gonna talk about that day until I get out of the bathtub. Like I get in the bathtub, I'm kind of like seeking that idea, that knowledge, I'm asking for it too, and something will just come. So I've always got a notebook, I'll scribble some ideas, and then I'll just roll with it. Every once in a while, Alyssa, I'll do like a, a download, I'll do a brainstorm of ideas, but I more am like inspired in the moment and my energy comes from that inspiration that comes now, as opposed to, oh, Here's the third thing I said I was gonna talk about this week. It's the third day. Let's just touch on that one. Um, I kinda, it has to be relevant to me in the day. So again, um, it comes from working, doing my job, um, and the struggles, the challenges, and just the topics of conversation with the women and the men I work with, and also seeking new knowledge daily. That's the one thing I will say that I do really well. I do a lot of things that I don't want to do. In business, you will have to do a lot of things that you don't want to do. I have a high tolerance for forcing myself to do things I don't want to do and do them repeatedly again and again and again. Discipline is a habit of mine. I can't say it's a skill skill of mine because that would imply that you don't have a skill or other people don't have the skill of discipline. Discipline is a high priority for me. Um, that I, one, do the things I say I'm gonna do, and two, commit to the process. It's just been something I do, period. I don't think about it. I know what I need to do and I go do it. Other people are like, but I don't feel like it today. And I'm like, whether I feel like it today, I'm doing it. Does that make sense? So getting out of your comfort zone is one of those things. I know the activities that I have to do that in the long run produce the results and the business um, achievements that I'm after. And I commit to those. I, I just, I commit to the activities, whether it feels good, whether it's uncomfortable, whether I'm good at it or not. Handling rejection is a mind game, right? Everything in business is a mind game. Where have I heard this? Like 90% of success is all in the head. I think it's actually higher than that, right? You gotta have some skills, but I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that aren't wicked smart academically, that are wicked smart in business because they're intuitive, they're listening, um, they're engaging, they're really learning to understand their craft. So. Rejection is a total 100% mind game. And when you're new in business, and, and this isn't even in business, this is in relationships, like why doesn't he love me anymore, right? Like what's wrong with me that he doesn't love me anymore? Girl, there is nothing wrong with you. You're just not the right fit for him, which means he's not the right fit for you, right? So we have to be able to rewrite the stories that our brain is automatically gonna tell us. And when the mind is left alone, its default setting is negative. It's negative. It's a fault finding machine. It's just, it's just the way the human condition is wired. Our job on this earth is to rewire it. Because like when people say hell on earth, hell on earth is having an unmanaged mind. 
that's hell on earth. All you think is negative. All you see is blame. All you see is rejection and victimhood and, and all the things nobody wants to feel. When you, when you, like people who have arrived, people who are, are feeling success and fulfillment and doing things that you admire have done an incredible amount of work on the mind game, on, on reprogramming that default setting and purposefully and with discipline rewriting the script. So when somebody says no to me in business, I'm a recruiter, right? So I'm, I want to recruit you to do things I love, especially if I think you're amazing because I want to hang out with you more, right? When people tell me no, I used to go, you know, what's wrong with me? Now I'm like, this isn't a good fit. It's not like moving on. No big deal. So the roller coaster comes when we are just um, still ill-equipped to change the script. And it's so easy to take everything personally. Have you ever read the book? Here's another good book everybody should read, um, The Four Agreements. Really small, super easy read, and um, powerful. And one of the agreements is four agreements we should make as humans in life. One of the agreements is never take anything personal. Is at the end of the day, it's never about you. So like when you think about, um, you know, uh, I have a lot of social anxiety. I gotta coach myself through it. So what happens with somebody who's got social anxiety? They're like, when I walk into this room, people are gonna know I don't belong. Am I wearing the right clothes? Am I talking the right way? Um, what are they gonna think about how I look or what I drive or the success of my business? And the truth is nobody's thinking about you. They're thinking about them. They're thinking the same thing. What are people gonna say? What are people gonna, uh, right? Am I doing it right? Am I sitting right? Am I talking to the right person, right? Everybody is stuck in their own head thinking about themselves, right? And so when it comes to rejection, it has zero, zero, zero to do with you. Whether you work in a brick and mortar, uh, you go to an office, you work for a, com uh, a company, a corporation, you work in some sort of corporate setting, or you're an entrepreneur um, like me, I work for a, a company and within there, we get a lot of training, right? And most companies, um, most businesses will offer training, right? Um, and leadership to their employees or their private contractors. And um, for me in network marketing, and I, I and this goes across the board. I don't care if you're in network marketing. I don't care if you're in finance. I don't care if you're in insurance. I don't care if you're in recruiting, radio. It doesn't matter. I think the biggest value for you and your growth, if you want to go big, let me just say that. If you want to go bigger, um, I think you need outside coaching. I think you need outside coaching. It was the smartest thing I did and I and I didn't do it until year two. Network marketing tends to tell you, you don't need to get any coaching, you can get it all right here. But think about it, network marketing leaders are not expert at leaders, uh, at leadership. Many times, many times they were in pharmaceuticals or in nursing or like as a stay at home mom. So I'm learning leadership and people skills as I go along, right? And same with the other women and men. And so I have found that the outside coaching is the ticket and it has been for me and I encourage everybody to look into it because um, I learned more about business from an outside perspective because inside you just have the business perspective of this one lane. It's very one-sided. It's very our agenda driven and that's natural. There's nothing wrong with that. But you need a broad perspective. Um, especially for those of you in network marketing, you need to understand other network marketing companies. You need to understand other leadership styles. You need to understand business as a whole, not just what your company is telling you to say. Because again, they have an agenda. Um, and and I, you should always, no matter who you work for, work with, understand that your um, hierarchy your boss, um, your leaders will have one agenda. 
And then there's you and your brand, your mission, your service to other people, and that agenda. Sometimes they will be in complete alignment. Sometimes they will be off depending on seasons, um, but make sure you get that right. So I have had a business coach um, for the last five years. Um, in the last year, um, I have, in addition to my business coach, had um, uh, uh, I paid for a, a nutritionist, a counselor, um, a spiritual mentor, guide, guru, I don't know what you want to call it, um, functional medicine practitioner. Um, I pay for the things that I know are going to help me become the person I know I can be. Here's the thing about coaching that you have to understand. Everybody's like, I just paid $5,000 for coaching. I don't know, over the next three months or whatever, or next year, whatever. And they're like, it's 30 days in, it's not worth it. I'm not seeing the payoff. Your ROI is not always financially, uh, well, it's not all, it can't always be measured in money. So I'll tell you what, I hired a business coach to help me um, turn my coaching into an online thing, right? I've got a website, I've got an online coaching program, um, I've got a sales funnel, I've got an email list. I didn't know how to do this. And I first learned about it about five years ago. I understood it, I knew that's where I wanted to go. But last year was the first year that I financially started making money. So year one, paid money. Year two, paid money. Year three, paid money. Lots of it. <laughs> and what I had was a pretty website to show for it, which cost me money. Year four, boom. Now we made, now we made a full-time income. We made a full-time income. And I'm not talking network marketing people. This year, boom. This will be a massive year. And so you have to always be thinking long haul and be in it for the long haul. If you put money down and you're like, I got nothing out of it, then, then, then your agenda is off. Because I'll tell you, I have paid for a bajillion, I've read a bajillion books, I've purchased books, I don't know, I probably purchase at least one a week, if not more. A lot of them are the same content, just written in a different way. If you are looking to learn, you will find something to learn in everything. I don't ever feel like anything I've ever purchased, any program I ever bought, any coach I ever hired was a waste of time. There is always, always something that made me smarter and more prepared next time. And even in, um, like I remember I paid, um, I paid for some services years ago. Um, and it wasn't a good experience. It wasn't good. And my husband will still bring it up every now and then and go, oh, what a waste of money. Those people screwed you. And I'm like, but you know what? I really learned from that experience and it's made me smarter. Uh, I'm a lot smarter with my money. Um, I'm closer to knowing exactly what I want. And had I not had that experience, I probably wouldn't be able to say that. So. Always, your ROI, you have to understand, your ROI is not always numbers. You've gotta always be looking at, did I grow? Is my confidence better? What are the skills that I didn't have before that now I do? Um, am I wiser, smarter, more polished, more articulate? There are so many ways to measure ROI, but too many people say that coaching's not worth it. I don't know if I'm gonna get my ROI. And too many people sit back and don't hire a coach because they're like, what's the ROI? Did, you, did, did it change your business? And I'm, you'll never know. Just just flip and jump in and pay for it. And here's the thing with coaching. I don't sit on my butt and just wait for myself to get coached. I'm active. You know, I put deadlines on myself because I paid for this and I paid good money for this. And I do not want this year to go by and me get to the end and go, well, what do I have to show for this year? Coaching is always what you're willing to put into it. It is never passive, never passive. All right, well, I think I beat that topic enough. <laughs> um, and you guys, I love this. There's so much good stuff here. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna take uh, the questions that I didn't get to today 
and turn those into some topics in the next few days. I hope you guys are having a great week. I love that you spent this time with me this morning. Um, I don't know if I've told you guys this, but since committing myself to being live here at 9 a.m. five days a week, it gets me ready for the day in a big way because I'll tell you most mornings I'm dragging going, why did I get myself into this? I would love to not get dressed, not put makeup on, not be presentable and not be on video camera. I would love to sleep in, whatever. And I don't get to because I've chosen to keep my word here, right? But I'll tell you every single day, every single day, no matter how much I drug my booty to get here, I turn off the camera and I'm like, I'm on fire, I'm ready. Like, what else we got going? And it just launches me into my day. And that's really because of you. So I, I'm grateful that you tune in. I'm grateful that you support me, you encourage me, um, and you give me something that helps launch my day in an amazing way every single day. So thanks for being here, Hot Shots. Make it a kick-ass day. Mwah.